it's Rob! Tony! We're in gaming, and that's you! Hello gamers and welcome back to the end. I'm Rob, of course, or Warshack if you want to call me by my in-game name. Today we're going to be doing the deck guide on the mid-range Paladin deck. Uh, this deck has been surprisingly really powerful on ladder. If we've uh, if you saw the deck testing video of it, uh, which I should have posted prior to this, it was it was nastiness. So we're gonna go ahead and make the deck guide on it. If I see, I made a couple, I believe, renditions. Um, not since the deck testing, but since before that, which was interesting because when we went to deck testing, that was more like the deck guide, and now this has like been refined to the point where I think it's it'll do fairly well. I mean, you can change a couple cards here and there, uh, but for the most part, I think the deck in itself, this is the way it should be run. Maybe some slight modifications of one to two cards, but besides that, I think this is fair. Uh, along with that, for those of you who are new to our deck testing videos and uh, aren't really uh, sure about the end, we go ahead, we win three games, hopefully in a row, if we happen to lose one across the way, as long as it's not our first game, all is okay. But we cannot lose the first game, and we cannot lose more than just one of those games. So, here, I believe we're just going to go ahead and throw down the Argent Squire. Uh, we could have played the Selfless Hero, but the problem is with the Selfless Hero is if we played the Argent Squire on two, well, I guess we could a passive mm, if he plays a two drop oh this is fine this is good that we played this instead of the uh, selfless hero all good in the hood wow double selfless hero okay so we're gonna win uh worst case three one best case three zero uh at the end of the video we'll talk about the deck why i do what i do and all that good stuff so ideally we really don't want this to be a frozen trap, but I think it will be. So we'll just go ahead. Well, it could be an explosive trap, which would be bad. Why would it be? Why would he be playing explosive trap? So if it's not explosive, we basically, we don't need to push damage. So we can go Arch and Squire reinforce and then just not attack. But I think it's a frozen trap, but I, but it could be an explosive. And if it's explosive, we basically lose. So I think we're just going to go Argent Squire, pass, and do nothing this turn. Uh, the only weak point to this is Unleash the Hounds. So the reason I did this is so he can make trades with his creature this turn. So let's say he plays like the Animal Companion, he gets a Huffer or a Leoc. We could kill off that creature um, and not have to deal with this explosive just yet. Plus he doesn't have the Eagle Horn down, so like it, it, it really doesn't hurt us that much by not attacking. Because we're not going to win by just dealing uh, 4 damage to the face. This is a... Uh, this is, I, I, it's a mid-range deck, but, oh gosh. Alright, so these two are going to give these two Divine Shield. Could it give the same card Divine Shield? I'm assuming not. Now if it's Explosive Shot, ooh, baby, a triple. So we can actually Rallying Blade buff these guys. Um, and we'll swing? Actually, no. We should swing first, because if it's a Frozen Trap, maybe we wouldn't attack with one of these creatures. Eh. We'll see. Frozen. Explosive. Okay. So attack with both these creatures. Hold on to our weapon for now. I was only scared because if it was a frozen trap, then um, us giving the 2 plus 2 was bad, playing the weapon prior. But if it wasn't, if it was everything but frozen trap, it would have been fine. So he's going to quick shot one, quick shot another. Um, best 5 drop we can draw, I guess is Harrison, but he doesn't have a weapon out. <laughs> the only problem is he doesn't have his weapon out, so playing Harrison now feels really bad. But he, his turn 5 is... It's a uh, Stranglethorn Tiger. I guess we have to do it. We can't just use our passive this turn. Not with this deck, not against the Hunter. Every time, folks. Every time. Alright, maybe this will be a frozen trap. Because this is a frozen trap. We still couldn't play Harrison to the next turn, but this will still have two charges. Well, it could be... Yeah, let's go in. Bear. Bear. Alright, so we'll just kill the bear and use our hero power. Unfortunately, now his bow has two charges and we weren't able to deal with it. Gosh. Who would have known he was going to top deck the bow the second we play? I mean, obviously my RNG, but either way. So lock and load. Uh, probably, he already used double quick shot, so arcane shot. Okay, still not really enough to deal with this uh, Harrison unless he wants to swing his weapon into it. And then hopefully we can draw into either any of our 5, 6, or 7 drops in the deck. I don't think there's any 7 drops, but we still we definitely have a lot of 6 drops that we can draw into. Consecration, not really the card we were looking for. So, not going to do anything here. I think I might... 
No, it's fine. I was thinking about maybe just Concentration, but that just seems bad. Like, really bad. He has to unleash the Hounds. He drew into another bow, so as long as he doesn't draw his Call of the Wild, I think we're okie dokie. And the Rag's gonna heal our face for 8, which is super nice. Double Concentration, now she boo boos. The Concentration is super nice if you're going against any form of aggro deck. Um, this is basically your win condition, and then against any um, late game deck, you have those huge creatures to deal with, which is what a quality deals with. So it's like, Concentration is your AoE ability for AO, uh, for the zoo decks, the aggro decks, and then your con equality is basically your CC for the bigger decks. And you can CC more than one creature at a time. So let's say you're playing against a Druid, and they've got like a Dark Arakoa and an Ancient of War out. You can basically trade your 1-1s one into the, um, the bigger creatures with the equality. So, I'm assuming this is another... Okay. So it's going to be GG, because we have the double Consecration and the weapon. But it doesn't necessarily matter too much. It looks like he was playing Yoggin Load. <sighs> but it's fine. And we're still on our win streak from when we played last time, so we'll actually go up. If we play, if we win three games in a row, we'll be ranked 10. Normally, I don't do my deck guides like at this high of a rank because we want to be, you know, anywhere between rank legend and maybe five, because that's the kind of player we want to go against. But it's literally like three or four days into the season right now, so all the good players are at this rank, unless you're like I don't know, what's his name, Tyler or um, Dog or somebody like that, who's obviously gonna be playing like eight hours a day and then they get to legend in like what the first week or something like that if they really want to maybe the first three or four days uh but for the most part the players that you know like this guy's rank eight obviously he's playing a lot <laughs> and he's good so i think i'm gonna like the one two curve rag's not something we want to keep if this was like you know day 28 in the season and we were rank 11 playing i would be you know it's questionable who we're going against but at this time, I, it's fine. The players we're going against are just as skilled as if we go against rank 5 players, for the most part. Alright, good start for him. I think we're just going to go ahead and throw the Tide Hunter out unless we get some other crazy spell. Nah. So, we're just going to go face. There's no point to knock off the Divine Shield because essentially if we draw into the Rallying Blade, uh, we get the buff from the Argent Squire. Plus, we know that he's going to swing this into here. Hopefully he doesn't have uh okay. Looks like he has a pretty good start to be completely honest. It's gonna be a rough game. So we actually equality is looking pretty sick right now. Especially since we have two. So well theoretically we could horse rider swing into here, go face, go face, or we equality, swing, swing, we still have one creature on the board, we float one mana. So I actually like the horse rider just for now. So we're gonna swing, and then we're just gonna go face with what we've got. So we can equality and passive this upcoming turn. I really didn't want to float a mana this early on in the game because I know he's overloaded, so we need to take advantage of that as much as possible. So he's going to coin it probably Feral Spirits. Um, oh, Totemic, please don't give him a, anything crazy. All right, that's fine. It's weird that he would make this particular trade. Um, so, wow, this is semi-interesting. So if we go make one of our guys 3-3, either way... It's trading into here, this trades into there, and we still have this on the board. Um, or we can equality, or well, what does Concentration do? Concentration kills this, this, this swings in there, we keep two, two, ones. Um, or we play the Uldaman, we buff this up, this trades here, uh, this trades here, and then we have a three, four, and then we keep the Concentration. I like keeping the Concentration in my hand because we have equality, Concentrate, and we can build up a decent field. So I like this. So this goes here, this goes here. And um, I guess our 1-1 one, one can swing into the, uh, the little air totem, because then it'll be able to attack it again next turn. Also, if he, uh, well, then if he plays the big dude, then we would equality. Swing that into there. Okay, so it looks like this is a consecration turn. We've got nothing better to do, to be honest. Whew. This is where this deck kind of doesn't shine too much. Having double equality in our hand is just not something you want to have. Like if one of these was like a Sylvanas or a True Heart or any Harrison, like any sort of our like tech cards, it might be pretty good. But we didn't, weren't able to draw into that. 
Uh, there's no point not to play the weapon here and just go face. Um, he's already pretty low, and um, we have quite a bit of damage in the deck. We also know that we can... He has no way to deal with this Keeper of Uldaman, and we also have two True Silvers in our deck along with Tyrion in our hand, which is going to generate us a weapon anyway. Harrison would have been a sick draw, but we draw Harrison when we go against the Hunter boys, and he doesn't have the weapon out, and then he top decks it. And now that he's played Doomhammer, we ain't never getting a weapon. <laughs> Alright. So what I see here is probably an equality, which kind of sucks, because then these guys are going to get wrecked. Oh my good Harrison! How you doing? Opa! Alright, my mistake. We should have equality <laughs> but I got too excited. Um, that kind of sucked, because equality, and then we'd swing our 1-1 one, one here, 1 there, and then uh, we would go ahead and just uh, have this creature alive. Uh, either way, though, um, it's fine. So we'll just go here. This will trade here, this will trade here, and this will go here. And then Tyrion is next turn, or we can like Peacekeeper, Uldaman, or we can do a lot. There's a lot of stuff we can do, as long as this Shaman can't pull out an insane amount of damage really quickly. But, he is a Shaman, and that's what they do. He's probably definitely looking for that spell power, so. Feral Spirits, okie dokie. And then the Axe, wow. is he gonna? If he trades into our 1-1s, we are not... Ooh, Popeye... Alright, so it looks like this is a Consecration kind of turn. So we can buff one of our dudes. Yeah, I think that's fine. So theoretically we could have gone about this a little bit differently, but I think this is fine. I'm not scared of the lethal right now. If he would have equipped it a doom hammer instead, I probably would have forbidden healing. But I would have concentration, uh, swung two one ones, and then forbidden healing for eight, so he couldn't double rock biter me. The hex is good because we're playing Tyrion this turn, and that's why I didn't necessarily play him last turn. Because uh, I'd rather just deal with the field, keep our creatures out. If he has hex, he probably would have used it because he's at such low HP. Um, and then we can just throw out the Tyrion and GG no re. Um, so. This can swing into here, doesn't necessarily matter. I don't see lethal in any way, shape, or form at the moment, but Tyrion probably solidifies that due to the fact that he's already used one hex. So if he has another hex, obviously he'll use it, but he's still only at 3 HP, so unless he has some magical Reno Jackson stuffed somewhere in his shenanigan hat, I think we're I. Right. To hold on to what we've got. Alright, so we can just equality. It doesn't matter. This goes here. This goes face. We didn't actually need to equality, but it just felt better. Alright. One more game with the mid-range paladin. And then we'll go ahead and we'll talk about the... Uh, the inner workings of the deck in the, the collection mode and talk about why I have what in here and then along with some of the synergies we may not have hit on because we actually haven't hit on quite a few cards yet. These games are surprisingly going by pretty quickly. Considering the way I built this deck, I imagined it going just a tidbit slower, but still works. Rank 10 is the top 9% in the rank season. That's incredible. Alright, so I don't really like this opening hand whatsoever. Like, Keeper of Uldaman's good, but we already have a ton of 4-drops. So, I don't mind putting her back in, like, in hopes that we draw our 1, 2, and 3s. So, there's the 1, there's the 3, there's the 3. So, we can actually play the 1, coin into double 3. And then we have Nazoth, even though we don't need it in this matchup, because it's the game's going to be over before Nazoth, you know, comes out. You know, does his little tentacles and whatnot. Harrison's good, as long as he plays Eagle Horn Bow. Unlike last, the first game we played. Uh, by the way, guys, Warrior and Hunter are very, very popular at the moment. Please don't get Savannah Hyman, thank God. He probably thinks I'm running... It, well, I think the main point that surprises people when they see this deck is the fact that they think it's Aggro Paladin. And when reality, this is like the farthest from Aggro Paladin. It's gonna... Well, it's... It has an Aggro-ish start, but like the core of the deck is not very Aggro-based. Like, there's not, there's no buffing spells in this deck besides Rallying Blade, which is essentially a weapon, not really a buffing spell. Um, quick shotting the 2-1. Wow. 
I was hoping he'd play a creature so he could Aldor it, but he didn't. And now I have to Aldor. Well, what would his turn 4 be? I don't know. I guess we just use this. We don't have a turn 4. If we had a, a turn 4, then I would have played Aldor here. But the fact that we don't have a turn 4 means we don't Aldor here. I mean, we do have a turn 4, but he's not going to play, like, this is what I this is what I expected, the Infested Wolf. So, like, essentially, if we would have played this, we would have swung into there, and then Consecration, but that doesn't feel good. So we're just going to make this down to 1 HP, and then we're just going to go ahead and swing face. And then next turn, we can swing Aldor into Infested Wolf, Consecration, and kill off his other creatures with our two 1-1s. Uh, one Unless he Eagle Horn bows, and then we just Harrison that. But I don't see an Eagle Horn bow here. Well, he could. He could Eagle Horn passive, but, or a 2-drop. Houndmaster, okay. So Consecration still looks pretty sick here. Unfortunately, though, if we Consecration, we can't swing, like... If we Consecration now, right, this goes down to 1, it summons 2 one ones. we swing, this dies, 1-1 one, one lives. We Consecration now, 2 one ones come out, this is at 1, we swing, and then we kill a 1-1. One, one. So it doesn't really matter <laughs> how we do this. Either way, we're Consecration. I fight. Well, we, actually, if we swing both of these, we don't kill the 4-3, we have to kill the 4-3, so Consecration it is. So this goes here, this goes here. So now he has initiative, which feels really bad. So as long as, if he plays Savannah High Man, at least we have an answer with Sylvanas. Um, but if he has like a weak turn, six turn, like a Kodo Rider, I think we still Sylvanas. <laughs> yeah, I think we still Sylvanas here. Kodo Rider still wasn't even that weak of a card, because then his 1-1 one -one stays up. But the problem is now he can like deadly shot and hopefully well he can like unleash the hounds no he wouldn't unleash the hounds he'd probably just deadly shot and hopefully we take the one one so he swings face with both creatures deadly shot or he just ignores it in total he drops the savannah high main gets ready for the call of the wild and says a lamau yeah this is this is rough because we drew nazoth he, we drew harrison he hasn't played a weapon Tyrion's another huge card we have the darkshire but we haven't drawn into great like murlocs yet or the biofin the heal is nice but the heal doesn't save us um we had to waste the equality on, like, not that great of cards because we couldn't just drop the Harrison because then it would just die to the Houndmaster who already gained value. So he's going to go ahead and sack both creatures. Quick shot. Uh, most likely, if he does a three drop, he'll use his passive. He's going to drop a secret and use his passive. Okie dokie. So this secret's most... Ooh, why didn't you use your passive? What the hell's wrong with you? Did I, did I miss something here? So I guess we're going to dark, passive, and uh, that's it. Nothing, nothing too exciting this turn. Next turn can be like a Harrison rallying. Uh, Tyrion is always an option. Uh, Call of the Wild. We kind of forced all that. Uh, so he's probably going to kill off the 3-3 three, three with the Huffer, which makes complete sense. Uh, now we could go ahead and just probably just Tyrion. <sighs> Unless he has another Call of the Wild, it's going to be rough for him. Theoretically, he can unleash the hounds right here too. That's pretty good. There's a lot a hunter can do. As long as they have the right cards, a hunter can do anything. Unleash the hounds. That's good for him. So now the hounds break the Tyrion's divine shield, or he would have had to use a creature or a spell. But he's already used double quick shot, from what I remember. He also could go with the deadly shot shenanigans, uh, which means we'd have to draw like an equality or consecration to bust through. So right now he's wondering if he should trade his uh, Misha and his two one. Uh, or he should, if well, well, if he had Deadly Shot, he would have used it already prior. Um, so uh, I don't know what exactly he's hoping for. Also, that Secret is most likely Freezing Trap. So if he kills our 1-1 with Divine Shield, we're not attacking with Tyrion next turn. <sighs> so there's the Misha and the 2-1 into it. Alright, we got the weapon. Maybe he runs Harrison Jones. That would change the game around for him a lot. It's interesting he made this attack. So I guess I'm going to test the waters by attacking, but what if it's um what if it's bear trap, right? So essentially you want to make this attack first. If it's not Freezing Trap, then we want a Keeper of Ultimate and make this trade. But I have a feeling it's Freezing Trap. But what if it's a Bear Trap, and then we can't deal with it anyway? 
Oh, it's most likely freezing, right? It's a, it's, a, it's it has to be. Oh boy, you're juking me out, Hunter. Why would he make this attack if it's freezing, though? That doesn't make sense. Like you would, ne if this is freezing, you would have never attacked this because you know I'm going to attack with it anyway this turn. So what would be, what secret would you have that you wouldn't want to make that tra attack? What if we just don't attack at all? I don't think that's a good option. Fuck you, we're going for it. Freezing. Yeah. There, there was, there was, there was no, there was no, there was no. That had to like. Why would you make? I guess he's just bad. I mean, he wasn't trying to juke me out. I guess that could have been a juke, but that's like the worst. I guess it worked. I guess like he's a he's a pro player. People, he juked me out. There you go. But what? Why? Like I want to like why? What was the logical reasoning for attacking that card? If you knew it was gonna get returned to my hand anyway, to make me think it wasn't a frozen trap, but it's always a freezing trap because hunters can't think anything past a freezing trap. And if they're going to play anything other but a freezing trap, it's explosive trap. And they always play like it's an explosive trap, when they, even if they want it to be a freezing trap. Because they don't even juke people out. Because I'm a hunter. So there's another creep. There's another speed secret. So let's... I have a feeling this is going to be another freezing... Okay, you're just going to... just going to concede. You don't even let me see what kind of fucking secret that is. Ugh. All right. <laughs> my rant about secrets <laughs> all right let's we got our three wins in a row fairly easily let's go into the the collection take a look at this what i think is a an insanely broken deck i definitely should probably recall it mid-range um all right so stick with me here guys this is a, this is a bit strange i know you're looking at the deck you're going rob what kind of drugs were you on when you created such thing and let me tell you it's where it works alcohol did this all right so one forbidden healing all right as we know this this, this deck originated from the nazoth paladin which is a, as we know a very slow controlling um sort of deck does not do very well against aggro does not do very well against mid-range but does very well against the um control decks and when i say doesn't do very well against aggro and mid-range if you draw a decent hand the deck would perform well but like not like a decent amount of times you would just draw all your late game stuff and you wouldn't be able to deal with what the aggro and the mid-range are throwing out by the time you did the game was over so uh, the core of the deck originates from Control Paladin, but what we've added to it is a, a sense of um, early game and mid game to deal with the other decks to kind of combat them or stall them long enough. So when the late game does hit, we just start throwing out the Justicars, the uh, the Sylvanas, the Rag, the Tyrion, and then when they finally get all through that bullshit, you throw down the Nazoth, and they're like, "Hey, Lamau, I'm dead." So. Um, one forbidden healing. We don't really need any more than one forbidden healing because we don't need to essentially heal that much with this deck because we have creatures that'll hopefully blockade our HP for the for the time being in the early game. With the Nazoth Priest or the Nazoth Paladin, we had two forbidden healings, a lay on hands, and um Rag the Light Lord to kind of combat us not having an early game with us being able to heal ourselves back up later. We know how that worked out. It didn't. So you also, I went for the zero forbidden healing and tested that. The problem is that is when they see all of this early game, they think of aggro paladin. So if we're going against another aggro deck, they don't expect me to have healing. So when you have the one forbidden healing and you can maybe sometimes heal for that 10 to 20 HP backup, players won't play around that, which gives you a severe advantage when combating other aggro decks or uh, another aggro deck. Uh, the Argent Squire, this in combination with the, I'm going to kind of group these together, the Squire, the Selfless Hero, the Biofin Tidehunter, the Rallying Blade, and the Harvest Golem, along with the Steward of Darkshire, all synergize well together. So if you have the, the Steward of Darkshire down and the Harvest Golem dies, the 2-1 that comes out of it gets Divine Shield. Um, the Biofin Tide Hunter. You have the Darkshire on the field. You play Biofin Tide Hunter. Both of the the, the two one and the one one with taunt get Divine Shield. You get Divine Shield. You get Divine Shield. Look under your look under your seats. You get Divine Shield. So everybody gets Divine Shield here. Uh, the Selfless Hero. Uh, let's say you have Rallying Blade in your hand. You'll kill off your Selfless Hero. You make the trade there. It gives a creature uh, Divine Shield. You play Rallying Blade. Rallying Blade busts up everybody that got Divine Shield. Whether it comes from the Steward of Darkshire or the Selfless Hero, it doesn't matter. Everybody gets a buff. Um, equality, like I mentioned, in a game 
Um, this is basically your CC for the control deck. So they play Ancient of War. They play, you know, just a huge card like Rag. You can't get rid of it. You quality, have your 1-1, one, one, take care of it, and then you just move on from there. The the Tidehunter, um, it's basically a 3. It's a 2-drop, 3-2, two two, and 1 of half of it has a taunt. And the taunt is what really makes this card cool is because if you've got the... Um, the Darkshire out and you play this guy, it's going to take two attacks just to get past that 1-1 one, one with Divine Shield um, with Taunt too. So that's good. Uh, the Rallying Blade, I know we already have two True Silver Champions, so you may be being like, that's too many weapons. But if you think about this, I looked at it in like a Control Warrior type deck. Um, they have War Axe on turn two and then they had Despite on four. So instead of War Axe on two, you have Rallying Blade on three and instead of the Despite on four, you have True Silver Champion on four. So I think having these early game weapons for field control because this deck doesn't have a lot of draw. And if a deck doesn't have a lot of draw, you need ways to do two for ones. And what's a better way to go two for one than using a weapon charge, to, two weapon charges to kill two creatures, right? Uh, the Outdoor Peacekeeper is kind of your, your mitigator. So because there's only two equalities in the deck and even with equality, it doesn't necessarily kill the creature. Um, let's say your opponent plays a four drop seven seven. You outdoor the peacekeeper it, and it becomes a one. It becomes a, a four drop one seven se or a four drop one seven, which is not as scary as a seven seven if you can't whip out the equality, which doesn't happen all the time. The argent horse rider is sort of your uh, trader, as we saw in the last game we played against the hunter. Uh, we were able to kill off his king's elec with our horse rider. Then he had ways to quick shot to kill the horse rider, which means the horse rider, again, did a two for one in that situation, getting us a decent amount of board control and hand control. Uh, the Harvest Golem, we play her because the Steward of Darkshire, also because it's a death rattle, and also because people don't know what the fuck we're playing. When people see Bilefin Tide Hunter, Selfless Hero, Argent Squire mixed in with the Harvest Golem, they are confused as fuck. <laughs> so, um, again, this is a deck that, and Aldor the Peacekeeper, people don't know what the hell you're playing. This deck catches people by surprise, they don't know how to play around it, and they don't know what to expect and i think that's what's the success with this deck at the moment it's going to be really sad because i have a feeling that this is going to be one of those decks that is going to go crazy in a couple months if not in the upcoming month i'm telling you guys this is this is the next secret paladin now maybe not as maybe not as broken as secret paladin but i can tell you a form of mid-range paladin will arise and it will be played at tournaments and I, whether it's this foundation of the deck or strife codes or whatever it's fine but this is there's some good stuff brewing right here all right, uh, Steward of Darkshire, we've kind of been over why she's good, been over why that's good. Double Consecration, this is interesting, right? So if you're going to think about most aggro mid-range deck, um, they really don't like Consecration's a hit or miss, right? So if you're not playing against an aggro, you're most likely never going to use this card, which is true. Um, but I've seen a lot of Zoo on Ladder, a lot of mid-range Shaman, and um, even against other Paladins, like uh, aggro Paladins, which seem to be popping up. Uh, Consecration is really good. Plus, Equality Consecration clears the entire opponent's board, so that's good. Keeper of Ultimate is just too insane not to play. Again, um, she can buff she can buff your creatures, uh, which which is great, or she can um, debuff your opponent's creatures. So let's say they play like a rag, uh, their eight eight rag turns into a three three rag, and then you just make a trade with your rallying blade, and you go eight them out, you're dead. Um, Harrison Jones, this is basically semi draw. I um, because this get deck does not have draw and. Um, no weapon destroyers. Harrison Jones is fine. As we saw against the Hunter, if I would have just waited a turn, we could have killed the Eagle Horn. Against the Shaman, we were able to get rid of four charges of the uh, the uh, Doom Hammer and draw four cards. It's just insane. Just Car True Heart is your control versus control matchup winner. Uh, due to the fact that you summon two one ones every single turn for free, basically, when you play her. Most control decks cannot keep up with that. So in late game, she is your winner against other, let's say, a control warrior. Sylvanas so combos well with the Nazoth. She has Death Rattle, really good against uh, Hunters. So like, say, turn 7, you drop Sylvanas. Turn, si or turn 6, you drop Sylvanas. Turn 6, they drop the Savannah High Main. Um, they, they'll swing their Savannah High Main into your Sylvanas and end up, you know, it, it nullifies that. So it's just a really solid card, no matter basically when you say, play Sylvanas. She's just fantastic. Uh, Rag, this is your heal, and you're a huge 8-8. You could play Rag the Fire Lord if you want, but I like the heal. Um, as we've seen in the previous game, healing for 8, and then also having an 8-8 body that can actually attack and choose where it attacks is key. Um, so, I mean, if you have the Rag, the Fire Lord, or Light Lord, it's up to you. I just like the Light Lord. It's a Paladin exclusive, and uh, we're playing Paladin, so 
Uh, that's why we're doing it. Tyrion is basically your Nazoth. This is what you want. When you play Nazoth, you're hoping to always bring back that sick-ass Tyrion. Um, he's just an amazing card unless he gets hexed, and then he's not so amazing. But most of the time, he's amazing. Um, and he will win you plenty of games. And of course, your Nazoth is your late game uh, win against control if your true heart can't get it done. But most of the time, your true heart is like, let's say you play Nazoth, you play against a warrior, he brawls it out, Tyrion dies, a 1-1 one, one lives, sad story, you play true heart, you still can win. So, um, yeah, that pretty much sums up the deck. Hopefully, you've en you will enjoy the deck as much as I've been enjoying playing it. We've gone from like rank 18 or something to 11 with, I think, one loss in there. And the reason we had the one loss, I don't even remember. I think it was just a really, really, we had like double equality, double consecration, and like an 8 8 in our hand or something crazy like that. Uh, but so, hopefully, you've enjoyed. As always, guys, I'm Warshack and happy whatever the hell day it is.